Hello and welcome to the first tutorial on the channel. This is a little different from the type of content I usually post, so I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make the sprite billboarding effect like the one I'm using in my game Amber Roots. So first off, I've got a new Unity project made here, and I'm using Unity version 2021.3.5f1 for reference. I've imported Cinemachine, the new Unity input system, and the 2D sprite package from the package manager to help demonstrate how to do this. You'll likely need the 2D sprite package to help you slice up your sprite sheets, but you don't need Cinemachine or the new input system to use the billboard sprite system I'll be showing you. However, I highly recommend both assets if you're starting up a new project or you just want to change up what you're using. Additionally, for the project setup, I've created a couple of things here in the project. We've got a sprites folder with a few sprites that I've already imported. Uh, just some things to put down in the environment as well as a tile to put down on the floor. The import settings on these are pretty standard. I've done sprite 2D and UI, single sprite because these are all divided up into single ones. I'm using pixel art, so I'm doing uh, 16 pixels per unit. I've also changed the pivot point on most of these to bottom, with the exception of the tile, which has the, pix uh, the pivot point to the center. Then I'm using point no filter because I'm, again, I'm using pixel art. And the compression set to none. If you're using regular 2D art, you're probably going to want those settings to be a little bit different. Additionally, for the ground tile, I have it set on repeat for the wrap mode. I've also set up a ground material here in Unity. I've got it on opaque, and I've got that tile texture on here in the albedo and made it a little bit greener. The metallic and smoothness is down to zero, and I've got the tiling set to 32 by 32, because I just think that looks pretty good for this. So the next thing we want to do is go into our scene and we want to create a plane. And you don't have to do this step, this is just because I want to have an environment in which to show the billboarded sprites. If you've already got a gameplay environment that you're working with or you don't want to do this, you certainly don't have to. I'm just setting up the scene here. I'm going to reset the transform and I'm going to throw in the ground material. And I think I'm going to scale this up to about 10 by 1 by 10. And there's our ground. So now we've got a stage to put these sprite billboards on. So now we want to create our sprite billboard. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new sprite renderer here. So I'm going to go to 2D objects, sprites, and in our case, I'm going to go ahead and make a square. I'm also going to create an empty game object here, and I'm going to reset the transform on both of these. I'm also going to make the square with the sprite renderer a child of the game object that we made. And why I'm doing this will become apparent in a little while. I'm also going to rename both of these objects just to be a little bit more clear. Let's call the parent object sprite billboard and the child object gfx. Now that this is all set up, I'm just going to push the square up so that it's fully visible here. So now you can clearly see it. The next thing we want to do is actually create a sprite billboard script. So I'm going to go down to the empty scripts folder that we made. And I'm going to go up to create new C sharp script. And I'm going to call this script sprite billboard. All right, let's hop onto Visual Studio. Okay, so here in Visual Studio, your script should look something a little bit like this. Um, we're not going to need the start method, so we can just delete this. We're also not going to need the systems.collections or the system.collections.generic, so you can delete those. You will need Unity Engine because we will be making this a mono behavior because we want to be able to attach this script onto our GFX objects. Okay, so in the update method, what we basically want to do is rotate the GFX transform so that it's always looking at the camera. Now there's already a method called look at that you can use, but I prefer this other method because I think it just is a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier to manipulate uh, piece by piece. So what we'll do is say transform dot rotation 
is going to equal quaternion dot Euler and this will take in three floats and what this will do is this will change the transform rotation of whatever this script is attached to to match some Euler formula that we pass in. You can see these three floats are going to be the angles in degrees that we'll be looking at, okay? Now, we don't need to change the X and Z angles. We'll come back to those in a little bit, but we do want to change the Y angle. The Y angle being the rotation on the upward axis. You can see in Unity here, this is the one we want to be manipulating. So back in Visual Studio, we want to change the Y value of the Euler quaternion. So this zero float can go away. And the angle that we want is the angle pertaining to the main camera in the scene. So we can say camera dot main dot transform dot rotation dot Euler angles, because that's what we're using out here, dot Y. And we can save this and go back into Unity. Okay, so back in Unity, we want to go to the GFX child, and we want to add the sprite billboard component. And I'm going to turn this off for a second so you can see what it was like before the sprite billboard. I'm going to hit play, and I've already configured my Cinemachine camera to spin around, uh, so I can use the mouse to rotate it. Um, but if you already have a working camera system, you should see a similar result. So that's without the sprite billboarding. Now let's turn the sprite billboarding on and hit play. And here it is with the sprite billboarding. You can see that the sprite is now turning, you can see it in the scene view there, along with the camera. And this brings us to why I made a GFX child. As you can see, the transform itself is actually rotating with the sprite as we move the camera. But if I go and click on the sprite billboard and back into game view, in the scene view, you can see that as I'm rotating that GFX child, the sprite billboard parent is not rotating. Now, this is something you might not need in your game. Your use case might be such that you can just put the sprite billboard script right on the root object. But the nice thing about this is that if you have a situation where you need to know the facing of the object, this is a better method of doing it because that way you can freely billboard the GFX without actually affecting the facing of the parent transform. This is of course a technique I'm using in Amber Roots where I'm determining what sprite to show and which animation to play based on the angle of the parent transform to the angle of the camera. That's a bit more complicated, so I'm not going to go into how to do that in this video. But if some people are interested in seeing how that's done, please let me know. I'd be happy to make a tutorial video on that particular topic. But I do want to do one more thing in this video, and that is I want to expand the functionality slightly of the sprite billboard script that we've made. Going back to these two angles here in the Euler Quaternion. Right now they're zero because we don't want to rotate them. But there is a use case that I can think of where you would. So I'm going to create a new variable up here, and I'm going to use serialize field so I can expose it in the inspector. And this will be a boolean called freeze xz axes. And we'll put its default value as true. So in update, instead of only calling this, we'll have if freeze x, z axis, then we want this line of code. Meaning, if that boolean is true, then yeah, we want these two angles to be zero. They're basically frozen in place. Otherwise, else, we want the transform dot rotation of your sprite billboard to be equal to the camera main transform rotation. You're just basically copying the angles exactly that the camera has. So now back in Unity, you can see the sprite billboard script now has the freeze x, z axis boolean, and it's checked right now. So if we hit play, we should get the same behavior that we were getting before, where we can rotate the camera and the GFX rotates with it. And if we pitch the camera up, 
you can see it still only rotates along the y-axis. But if we change this and turn that off, in the scene view especially, you can notice that as I pitch the camera up and down, the sprite rotates with it on its other axes. And this is really good if you're working on something that's kind of a top-down view um, that's a little skewed, something like Paper Mario, if you can imagine, because that way you can still get the sprite showing uh, without uh, necessarily having to be level with it on the camera side. So let me put together a quick little scene and showcase this now. Okay, so now you can see how the scene looks with a few sprites added, all of them with sprite billboarding, and this is uh, really nice for if you're trying to explore in a sort of first-person environment, if you're looking at some of those older games like Doom or Daggerfall and thinking that those graphics are pretty cool, uh, this works really well for that. And here's the same scene from above. This is with the X and Z rotation enabled. You can see it gives it almost a 2D effect, but if I move around a little bit, you can see there's still sprite billboarding, but they angle to look at the camera that's above them. And this looks really good if you, again, if you want to make something like a Paper Mario style game or more of a top-down game, but you want to work in 3D, this works really well for that. This even works with a orthographic camera rather than a perspective one. So you could do a sort of isometric look and still use the sprite billboarding and it works really well. It really just depends on what you're doing and the look you want to go for. And that wraps up this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. An extra special thanks to my Patreons. To wrap this up, I just want to say that if there's other tutorials that you're interested in seeing, like the sprite facing tutorial or other stuff like that, please let me know. I'd love to get some ideas from what people want to see. And let me know if you like this kind of video about uh, tutorial game dev stuff that's not just devoted to a devlog for Amber Roots. I'm really curious in hearing your opinions on that. So yeah, drop down some suggestions in the comments below or head over to the Paper Mouse Discord, links in the description. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notifications about future content. And as always, thanks for watching.